So after being officially introduced to Shane Gillis, uh, <laughs> I think it's been a couple of weeks, or maybe just a week. Uh, I forgot exactly when. Um, but <laughs> I, in just that one reaction, I got all, just about all the information I would need to kind of analyze him as a comedian, and um, I, I could tell. <laughs> If y'all are down, and you know, based off of the few recommendations I got from that from that reaction, um, I can tell I'm I'm gonna enjoy this journey. It, it's it's gonna be some fun, and based off of the title of this, I can only imagine uh, where he's going with this one. So, this is Shane Gillis, Trump versus Biden, uh, beautiful dogs, 2023. I'm gonna assume that's the name of his special, and this is. The Trump and Biden part of the special. So, um, listen, man, I'm ready to hear this, see this. It should be fun. Knowing him, again, I've only we only one reaction in on Shane, and he gave he gave us a memorable moment. So, <laughs> with the special Olympics, uh, Olympics. So, I'm ready to hear this, man. Let's go. Dudes with Down syndrome <laughs> love women so much that like. I've never been a believer of being gay is a choice. But I will say, every dude I know that can't think fucking loves pussy. <laughs> All right. All right. I guess it's a keeper. All right, that's, that's the end of that. That's where that should end. Look, I was talking earlier. I'm not... I'm not a Republican yet, but I will say, I just want to see, like for real, I don't care if they arrest him. If he loses the primary, I don't get, let him debate, dude. Let him debate. All I want to see is him debate. Dude. Okay, Hannibal, yo, Hannibal, yeah. if, he, if he gets arrested, Hannibal Lecter him out to the fuck, just bring him on stage. Here's my idea, final debate of the year. I have one Republican candidate, one Democrat. Be like, all right, fellas, surprise third guest tonight. Fucking stone cold music, the glass shatters. <laughs> he walks out, just, they're both gay. <laughs> I mean, see how they handle that. I think it is actually important to see how the candidates handle that type of pressure of debating with Trump, dude, because so far none of them have been able to handle it. He literally, every debate, he just bullied whoever was up there. The only one who did pretty good in the debates against him was Biden, just because he had no fucking idea what was being said. <laughs> Which actually helped him. That worked out for him. Because Trump's whole thing is he tries to get in the other guy's head, dude. You can't get in Joe's head. <laughs> Joe's not in there. Good luck, dude. Biden, Biden is Trump's kryptonite in a debate. He's literally perfect. He can't beat him. Because Trump's whole... Trump tries to drag the other guy into like a shit-talking contest where he will win. He will win at that. He can't get Biden. He tries. Every, every debate he's trying so hard and Biden's just... <laughs> He tries, he just, you're a loser. Your son did crack. And Biden's just, yo. <laughs> Wait, yo, his, his impression was incredible. <laughs> his, his, that was a really good impression. But he's spot on, bro. He's spot on. And I feel like we're not going to get political with this, but one thing I feel like every everybody could kind of respect about Trump um, and it's you know again we're not about to get political with this but the guy the and he lies don't get like everybody lies but the fact that Trump has the balls to say some of the things he says like it's like even white people who have, you know, uh, systemic or societal power or influence. It's like they know their power, but they won't be blunt about it. Trump is blunt with it. Like he, he you know, and I'm not I'm not going back to grab him by the pussy. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about none of that. I'm just like this in general. 
And what he said about Biden is, I, I mean, look, I mean, I would be lying to you if I said I thought Biden was going to run again. I was like, after the sandbag fall, I was like, yo, fam, I don't know if Biden got another four years. I think he he got his one term. I thought he was going to be done. So the fact that he's running again is hilarious. But how he's depicting this is perfect, is absolutely perfect. And that impression was really great. That's it, he tries. He just, you're a loser. Your son did crack. And Biden's just, what? Sorry, <laughs> like, damn, dude. That's actually a pretty good comeback. You might win this thing. I miss it. I miss the speeches with Trump. You remember that? We used to get, we used to get five speeches a day. When he was in office. Anytime you turn on the TV, that guy was giving another fucking speech. Live, dude. Be in front of a helicopter, scream, calling a lady a lesbian or something. Like, this is gonna be a tough one to defend at work. But I'm gonna. <laughs> now it's sad. Now with Biden, we get like one speech every three months. And it's hard. He's like falls and shit. It's hard to watch. It's sad. I'm rooting for the guy. Obviously, I want things to go well, but it's hard to watch him do anything. Anytime I watch Biden do anything, I get the same feeling as like, you ever go to a friend's house and they have like a 16-year-old dog and it walks in the room? And you got to do that whole like, oh, hey, there he is. Just look at him. He's looking great. My favorite thing about Biden is... Any, anytime Biden finishes a speech, he transforms into a Roomba. Just... Okay. I miss it. I miss the Trump speeches. Trump gave what I think was probably one of the greatest speeches of world leaders given. You know, it's got to be up there with like Churchill, Gettysburg Address. Anyway, for real though, it was my favorite speech I've ever seen a president give. It was, the night, it was the night the United States killed the leader of ISIS. Trump comes out of the Situation Room at like midnight in the White House and he walks down that fucking tunnel like he's, and gives a press conference like he's giving a post-game NBA <laughs> just killed a guy press conference. He walks up in front of the entire world at midnight and just goes, Abu Bakar al-Baghdadi is dead. He died like a dog. <laughs> That's all him, dude. <laughs> I didn't change one word of that. That's what he opened with. And then he did 40 minutes. The speech is 40 minutes for no reason. It wasn't a prepared speech. He freestyled 40 straight. Not even a speech, just mean shit talk for 40 The meanest shit talk you've ever heard in front of the whole world. Abu. We could hear him crying, I said. Abu, don't cry. Abu. Let me tell you something, Abu cried, he cried quite a bit. I wouldn't have cried. <laughs> Cry baby back daddy, that's what we were all calling. <laughs> Look, that's crazy. I love everything about that speech. I love it, I love thinking about Trump in the Situation Room. Sur and like, that's, that's what I mean, right? Like, the, like the Obama, Osama, no pun intended, but the Obama speech that he made after the death of Osama bin Laden. I mean, he, you know, walked down the White House, you know, hallway with the red carpet and the podium right there, and he gave the announcement, and it was, it was done in such a respectable, like you, you, you would almost have thought like that was like the funeral service for Osama bin Laden. Like it was like, you, you know. Obama went up there and like he addressed you know what I mean like what Osama was connected with and what he did and everything and you know he really put emphasis on the Americans that passed away and everything and like <laughs> exactly what he said like Trump Trump and I don't even remember this speech that he's referencing but I can I could vividly see it like I've seen enough of Trump that like I know what he's saying 
is 100% correct. You know what I mean? Like, I picture it. Like, it is, like, that's hilarious. I'm the bite. Generals watching a live, watching Special Forces, watching those cocksucking Navy SEALs. <laughs> those, by the way, if I was in there, I'd be like, get out of that, move run. They're great lovers, don't let them get you. Ah, they got them. Ah, they're making them squirt. <laughs> no. No, how can you do this? That's what we should do. Instead of, you know, instead of Zero Dark Thirty killing these guys, we should break in and have our special forces fucking whack them off in their own bed. <laughs> that sends a pretty serious message, dude. Can you imagine that? Just four Navy SEALs holding your arms and legs. <laughs> You're the only dude without night vision. <laughs> Queer. <laughs> what? You fly away on a helicopter. You just got jerked off in your own bed. You fucking jerked me off. You make me do come. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It wasn't military. Situation room, watching a live military operation. He's the only dude in the room that wasn't military. He must have been the only dude watching it that was like, oh! <laughs> you could tell he's never seen it before by the fucking speech. The speech sounded like a guy just trying to tell you some shit he saw. Just... A lot of guys would knock on the front door, not these guys, not our guys. Not our guys, our guys went through the wall, they blew up his wall. <laughs> and they used dogs, beautiful dogs. <laughs> beautiful dogs is the funniest detail. Because it's true, they actually did use, it was the army rangers and they used dogs because they were afraid Al Baghdadi was going to be wearing a suicide vest, so they killed him with dogs and a robot. <laughs> and then made fun of him for crying. <laughs> Let that guy cry. That's the scariest death I've ever heard of. That dude was laying in his bed in the middle of the night, his wall exploded. Fucking ten dogs and a robot broke into his house. Dude, ten dogs wearing helmets and goggles broke into his house. The Paw Patrol, the actual Paw Patrol broke into his house. <laughs> Alright dude, you guys have been so great. Right, I, always, I always watch the last joke of his stand-ups. That's hilarious. Yo, yo, that actually is like a terrible way to die. Being ripped apart to death by like vicious dogs. Like that's that's a terrible way to go out. Um Yeah. Oh, this is it? I'm not gonna lie, I wanna watch it! I wanna watch it! We not gonna watch the whole thing. Let's just get, let's go a minute in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. The compound had been cleared by this time with people either surrendering or being shot and killed. <laughs> Eleven young children were moved out of the house and are uninjured. The only ones remaining were Baghdadi in the tunnel, and he had dragged three of his young children with him. They were led to certain death. He Oh, oh, here come the dogs. But look, it, it, all right, so for one, you can clearly see he's reading from a teleprompter. Like, he's, like, eye-gouging it, right? He's literally eye-gouging it. But it, it's so, it's like, this is, not, like, give me the president who gives, like, all right, hold on. Let me hear the dog part. Let me hear the dog part. It's the end of the tunnel as our dogs chased him down. <laughs> He ignited his vest, killing himself. 
and the three children. Oh. His body was mutilated by the blast. The tunnel had caved in on it in addition. But test results gave certain immediate and totally positive identification. It was him. Man, look, man. <laughs> Shout out to Shay, man. Shay killed that. Shay, all right, so add impressions to, to the list of, like, great qualities. Again, impressions aren't a necessity for comedians, uh, but it does, it is something pretty cool that if you can do, you know, and do it well, you know what I mean, like, like Eddie Murphy didn't do great impressions of like Michael Jackson and other people that well except for when he sung when he sung he sounded incredible but like when he was like impersonating Michael Jackson speaking like it wasn't a great impression right but you have people I'm trying to think of who's a who's a great impersonator Comedian, comedian who does great impersonations. Uh, uh, why am I thinking so hard? Uh, I can't think. But it's a great, it's a great quality to have as a comedian if you can do it. And if you can't, and you kind of do it in like a mocking way, it's still kind of funny. But you know, the fact that he actually, like, he, the manner, he even changed, like, his lip actually, like, you see. Like Trump, like he did the lip thing that Trump do with the upper lip, kind of like it was perfect. It was perfect. Shane, I right, man, look, Shane is a special talent. And again, we only two reactions in, but I'm I've I see that I see that now. Um, yeah, <laughs> he's he's great. <laughs> Shane said it was 40 minutes. It's eight, it's eight minutes and 34 seconds. <laughs> uh, uh, Shane is great. And maybe it probably was longer. And this is like just a cut version. But, oh, man, that's funny, man. Y'all let me know what else from Ch Shane Gillis I need to check out. Y'all did give me a few more uh, recommendations. So, definitely going to hop on those ASAP. But if there's any more, y'all let me know. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate y'all for watching. Until next time, with Shane Gillis. Peace.